Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and today I'm really excited to talk to you about one of the new products we have for this year and that is our Torknado motor. And um, one of the things that this is really important for is for our First Tech Challenge um, users that are uh, been uh, using the, the Tetrix material for building robots all this time in our motors, but they have uh, had some issues with our motors being um, strong enough and durable enough. So based on feedback from our FTC teams, our First Tech Challenge teams, we have come up with a brand new motor that we think is really going to uh, help out with the competition being exactly what they need. So let's go first and talk about some of the physical characteristics of this motor because that, that's the meat of what everybody really wants to know is what's the, the detail on this. And let's start with a steel, all steel uh, 60 to 1 gearbox that uh, is replaceable. Now 60 to 1 is the only ratio that we have right now, but there are plans later on to uh, perhaps release a different uh, gear ratio gearbox. But 60 to 1 with a no load RPM speed of about 100 RPM, again with that 60 to 1 ratio, a little bit slower RPM. Um, these next two things are the biggies for uh, our uh, competitive uh, folks that really want to know um, how durable this motor is. And uh, start with the uh, stall current of only 8.7 amps. Uh, so in other words, uh, when the motor is in a stall condition, it's only going to draw 8.7 amps. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. The stall torque is rated from the factory at 700 ounce inches of stall torque. Again, one of the best. Uh, ratings for the stall torque that uh, available in this range for this type of uh, a product. It does have uh, a built-in power pole connectors. So the power pole type style connector that everybody likes for competition durable it is built into that and as well as a built-in encoder cable which leads us to the fact that it does have a built-in encoder. It's a Hall effect encoder, high resolution um, that's built right into the motor. So all of the features that everyone really wants for competition, we've got built right into this motor. Uh, and again, um, the encoder cable comes off. Let me show you that real quick. The power connection does not. It's built in. So you can use it with or without, and the cable does come uh, as part of the motor. You don't have to buy that as an extra piece. So it's all inclusive, ready to go. Um, we were really very fortunate to be able to get it at a really good price point. So we think we're really excited about how this is going to impact our first tech challenge users. And we think it's going to be an important addition for them to be really competitive in what's uh, become a very robust type of a challenge. So we've got a very robust type motor for that right now. Um, and I think uh, the important thing is also to show this in action. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a couple of uh, fixtures that I can actually show some of these effects. Bear with me and I'll pull them right up. All right, so we do want to show this motor in action because I think that's important for everybody to understand and, and get a, uh, a glimpse of that. And one of the first things I want to show you is uh, the encoder uh, functions. Uh, it's important for our First Tech Challenge users to be able to have encoder applications on our motor so that they can either drive to a certain position or use them on an arm and be able to control the movement. So I have a rig set up here to, to kind of demonstrate the motors being synced together and actually tracking and maintaining a position together. So if you'll see on this rig, we have two belts. We have a paddle that's meeting in the middle. And I have a simple program written so that when I start this, just like so. You'll see that the, the motors are synced and the paddles are coming together in the middle, showing that they're, they're syncing the action and tracking the encoder counts. So if I actually slow one side down, you'll see that it actually speeds up and to meet again and stay in sync. And that's because of the high resolution built-in encoders. So let me try that one more time. Just slow that down. And you'll see that it's sped up and the, the paddles stay in sync. So again, high resolution, Hall effect encoders on the back of the motor, make, it's gonna make it very uh, important and easy to use in the competition. Now we wanna really kind of give you a visual of torque and, and torque can be a little bit of an abstract thing. We, we have a number for that. Uh, again, it was for this motor rated from the factory 700 ounce inches, but sometimes we really don't understand what that means other than the fact that the higher the number the better but 
What we really wanted to do was show you what that physically means in action. So I built this rig to kind of do that. And again, I've got a basically a force gauge. It's a, it's a scale that, that measures up to 50 pounds. And we've got our motor hooked up down here. And we're, when we turn it on, it's gonna pull down on the scale. And the stronger the motor, the further it's gonna pull down the scale. Now we actually, to do that again in ounce inches, what that really means is that I need to have a lever that on the end of my motor that is exactly one inch long. So I have um, uh, actually a, a pulley that we made that is exactly from the center of rotation out to the edge, uh, exactly one inch. So that gives us a, a one inch lever that uh, as it pulls and rotates around, we're measuring rotational torque or rotational force. And we're gonna get a reading on the scale of exactly how much that torque is in pounds. And we'll, we'll show you the conversion of what that would be in ounce inches. Now, um, to show that it's basically uh, just a battery that we're hooking up um, directly to the motor. Obviously, we don't really recommend that you do this at home because uh, the longer that you leave this in uh, a stall condition, um, this is where that 8.7 amps of current comes into play. It begins to, to heat up, and, and this is what actually is the enemy of a motor is in this stall condition. As heat begins to generate, the longer it's in that stall condition, generally, depending on how much current it draws, the hotter that it gets. And if it stays in that condition too long, then you can have failure of the motor. So again, I'm just gonna turn this on, we'll pull the scale down, and uh, we'll see how, how actually strong this motor is. Remember the figure that we, we got from the factory is 700 ounce inches. This is a very freshly charged battery. I just pulled this battery off the charger, so it should be ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this on. And if everybody's ready, watch the gauge here real quick. And let's see what happens. And you saw, I've got a uh, backlash there, but it pulled it all the way down off the scale uh, past the, the 50 pound mark. Uh, actually, it looks like it's reading about 51, 50, uh, 52 pounds if, that, if you continue the scale down. 700 ounce inches um, is somewhere in the 40 range. Uh, and uh, again, we're well above the factory rating. The important part again, I wanna reiterate, is that stall torque, or not the stall torque, but the current that it's, it's drawing, 8.7 amps. And what that really means is because that's a low figure, it's gonna uh, generate less heat, which is gonna make the uh, sustainability of that torque con condition much longer before the motor can fail. So it's very efficient in the way that it actually generates the power without generating extra heat. So this is what's gonna make it really durable in the competition, is how long we can get it under those high load conditions before we generate enough heat to really cause a failure. According to the test from the factory, this motor should be able to endure that stall condition for a, a minimum of five minutes and beyond. So um, that's kind of a, a safety factor that we're saying that um, we should be able to uh, put this in that stall condition for up to five minutes, which for the, any of those of you that are familiar with um, the motors in the competition, that's that's well beyond um, any of the existing figures. So uh, we think it's gonna be a very durable motor for, again, that competition space where competition a has gotten so um, uh, robust and, and the, the different games every year sometimes can put a lot of demand on these type of motors. So we're excited about that. So that's um, this motor and how it shows torque. So uh, that was a little bit about our torque NATO motor. I hope you found that it uh, of good information for you and maybe it'll allow you to make some decisions on what you need for this year's competition as well as potentially uh, on any of the robots that you build in, and use in the classroom. So like we always say, have fun, build some robots, and come back and see us.